Hello, welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Today we've got a CZ557 Eclipse. This is the standard 557. It's quite an economical rifle. It retails in the UK about £750 and it's in a synthetic polymer stock. But it's not like every other synthetic polymer stock and this rifle has got some interesting features. So please stick with us and I'll detail some of the features for you because I've enjoyed shooting this rifle. Overall length is 41 and a half inches or 1050 millimeters. The rifle is available with a 610 millimeter 24 inch barrel as well. Overall weight is 3.1 kilograms. Twist rates are a 1 in 10 inch for the 3006, 1 in 10 inch for the 308, or 1 in 8 inch for the 65 Creedmoor. Magazine capacity is 5 rounds plus 1 in the chamber for any one of them. We shot mostly Hornady ammunition through the rifle, it's my go-to for most of these gun tests. Uh, you can see a variation of group size here, but um, ironically I rather stupidly threw away the uh, finished box of the Hornady TAP FPD. Now if we go up to the top here to start with, that's GMX, these are all shot at 100 metres, so that's 100, 165 grain GMX. This one at the bottom here is the 178 grain Precision Hunter, but the best performance was from the 168 grain TAP FPD, which although is a match bullet, it proves the capability of the rifle and another one there. Now these were shot in real world conditions on a windy day, so some of them are slightly better than others, but I think everything in that ammunition certainly meets the threshold for one minute of angle. And as a consistent hunting rifle, I was more than happy with this gun. Right, I'm not going to bore you with all the statistics and figures. What can I tell you straight off the bat? Okay, it's threaded 14 by 1 for a moderator or break. It comes fitted with four end sights and mid sight here. It's fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Quite neat unit, it's easy to take off. You will need to take the back end one off for the scope. Uh, you'll probably need to take the front one off if you're going to put a moderator on, but it's no problem to do at all and nothing's brazed in place or difficult to do. CZ cold hammer forged their barrels. It was notably clean from uh, when it was provided at the time. And I ran it in, and after about 30 rounds, um, 30, 40 rounds, something like that, I gave it a clean. I treat rifles hard because I haven't got them for long. And you know what? It was a really easy to clean rifle, and it had picked up, I think, one or two flakes of copper from the bullets themselves. I was impressed, and it cleaned extremely easily. The end is fully free-floated. It's stiff. Nothing's moving. We've got two lugs on the underside. It's a soft-touch polymer stock finish, and we've got plenty of grip on the side. Scope mounting system is CZ's own proprietary dovetail and the back, back ring has got a, a recoil stop on it as well. These are worn rings that were supplied with the rifle for me and they've fitted very well, stayed on very well. Also, I'll come to in a second retention of zero. What else can I tell you about the rifle? So long action, bolt travel is quite long because this is available in 3006, 308, 65 Creedmoor. The 6.5 Creedmoor twist rate is the 1 in 8, which is very desirable for the long, skinny 6.5mm bullets. This 1 in 10 on the 308 is actually my preference because it suits, it will shoot 150s, 165s. It came alive with 168s and 178s, uh, and those will be my choice for it. Um, you may have seen the video, I put a moderator on it too. I'm just going to get rid of that for now, as we can see. Other factors to note okay, it's a sprung floor plate. It's polymer construction, spring steel here, holds five rounds, one in the chamber if necessary. Bolt travel is light, simple, and it's a 90 degree throw off two lugs. The bolt face itself has got a sprung extractor and a large ejector, sorry, a sprung ejector and a large extractor claw. The bolt release is a small pin just here on the left side of the bolt shroud where, where the bolt shroud opens from. It's a little bit tricky if you've got cold hands or gloves but it does work and it stops the bolt and it remains nice and smooth and you know it doesn't interfere with the way the rifle looks. Safety, pack, safety catch is two position, doesn't lock the bolt handle but everything works silently, quietly 
and there's no hassle. It's notable to mention that if you load the magazine correctly, make sure you slide the rounds fully back in it. It slides very smoothly and it loads cleanly into the chamber with no damage to the bullet the plats or anything like that. You don't get scoured up brass or, or messy cases and the ejection doesn't dent the case next either if you're a reloader. Moving on from the mechanics, oh, we'll just touch the trigger. You might have seen, I'll put a link to it, there's a video about the trigger adjustment. It came with a tiny bit of creep, breaking about 1400 grams average. I actually took it out of the stock, tweaked the trigger, because CZ advertised the rifle as an adjustable trigger. So if they do that, I'm going to do it. And you know what? The trigger pull on it is lovely. Reach to the trigger blade from the grip is, is on the longer side. It's certainly a rifle that probably suits larger hands. Um, and I'm, you know, if I was being really picky, I might pr prefer a serrated blade. But actually, it's a really nice trigger to use. And for sporting purposes, where you might have gloves on, cold weather, etc., you know, there's loads of space in the trigger guard. The feel is, is, is just fantastic. You can adjust the over-travel, you can adjust the sear engagement, which is effectively the creep pre-travel, um, or, or to delete it. And that will, of course, take you through the life of the rifle if it wears in, you know, beds in once it's got used. I really like that element about CZs because they don't pretend a rifle has got to be great from the box. They want it to be great for its whole life. Other notable facts and features. The grip is quite a tight radius. It's definitely suited to larger hands. I wouldn't say it's impossible for smaller hands, but if you're used to rifles, especially American ones that have got small grips, this feels quite hand filling. There's a slight ambidextrous palm swell, but the stock overall is fully ambidextrous. The comb, top of the cheek, but it's non-adjustable, none of that. But here's the thing, okay? Can you see how close that bolt runs to the comb? Because it's been kept high. It fits really nicely. It's a slender shape and it fits beautifully under your cheek. Now that is a 50 millimeter scope objective on there, 30 millimeter tube. That's, I think, what they would call medium rings, but different manufacturers call rings different heights. Now, I wouldn't want to put that scope any lower so there's no point going for a smaller objective because the bolt clearance isn't enormous. But on the other hand, if you're gonna put a 56 millimeter scope on it and it gets even bigger because you know, 50 millimeter for scopes these days is pretty common. So I think this has been very well specified because you get good head position and alignment straight behind the scope. And if you do need that little bit more cheek space, why not go for the 56 mil scope, high rings, do you know what? I think that's a great compromise for a sporting rifle. And so rarely seen, you know, on rifles where you've got a sloping comb like this, which is, you know, a pretty old fashioned design. It does come with iron sights. I don't think many people are gonna be using them. Um, length of pull is 360 millimeters. There's no spaces. The recoil pad's an inch thick and it's nice. It's a nice shape. Radius top, radius bottom, underside sling stud. And it grips in your shoulder and you know what, as well as a hunting rifle, this has actually been shot quite a lot on the range and it's surprisingly stable and consistent. I would say it is on the larger side of a common sporting rifle. It's certainly not super light, super compact, but that's not to say it's bulky or onerous. I think it just suits people who want a little bit more, a little bit more size, a bit more meat, beef to the gun. Now, other facts to note. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of group sizes and things like that if you're interested in that. Ammunition choice, I shot a few, few different types of Hornady through it. It definitely preferred the heavier Hornady. Um, interestingly, muzzle velocity from the 20 and a half inch barrel was very close to what box data stated it would be actually. Now the 10 inch twist gives you a bit more future proofing as well, because as well as liking the slightly heavier um, lead core copper jacket bullets, it's good for the slightly heavier copper bullets as well. It shot 165 grain GMX well, the best groups were the 168 TAP FPD, which is the 100, and, let me think now, 168 grain ELD M bullet from Hornady. But the ELD, ELD X 178s with a precision hunter, that also shot nicely. I'll show the groups in a minute if I'm not put them on screen now. So the last thing to tell you is probably this. Um, when I took this out of the rifle on the other video, I'll put the link to it. Um, and did all the trigger work. I'd already shot the gun, already zeroed it, you know, an approximate sporting zero. I was going through ammo testing as well. But here's the fact. It was notably, that rifle is a very good fit in its stock. It's got a flat underside on the action. It's got recoil grooves on the action that make with the stock itself. And you know what? I put that back in, torqued up the two action screws, front and rear, and it held zero. Now, for a sporting rifle, that is very unusual. 
and I am impressed by that. It shows that CZ have given you a very accurate injection moulding on the stock and all the metal work is, is lovely, richly, deep blue, almost black in colour. You know, even the muzzle thread is done as well. I like the rifle, I'm impressed with it. We've got a nice bright steel finish on the bolt to contrast and I think it looks slick. It's the perfect example of a gun made by engineers without disregard of marketing or modern capability. It's an economical rifle, rifle as well of the UK market. I don't think it's super expensive. So what can I tell you about this overall? I like it. I think it's great. 750 pounds, that would take you hunting anywhere. I actually first encountered the uh, 557 on a boar hunting trip in, where was I now? Czech Republic, 2013. So the home of CZ. And I was given this rifle, given a box of ammunition. There you go, hunt your boar. I got one, one shot, that's all I had with the gun. I thought, I really must review that when I get back. Well, that was 2013, it's now 2021, so we're eight years on, finally got one. And you know what? It lives up to its reputation. If I was super critical, I may prefer a slightly shorter bolt stop and perhaps a modification to the floor plate for the shorter cartridges. The only real problem is that, well, it's not really a problem, the only real fact is you just need to make sure you nudge all the all the rounds in the magazine just push them back so that they are onto the tip of the bolt face and that is pretty much that so hope you've enjoyed watching please comment please like please subscribe follow my channel because you know i don't shoot millions of rounds millions of groups and i'm not going to say this is the most accurate rifle in the world i'm going to tell you what i think about this rifle relative to what you know advertising might say or just the bare bones of statistics if you look on cz website they've got some quite interesting facts and figures and i think overall this is going to get a thumbs up from me so thank you for watching and uh, bye for now this 308 version of the eclipse rifle has a cold hammer forged barrel 20 and a half inches or 520 millimeters long it's threaded 14 by 1 for a moderator or muzzle brake and has a 1 in 10 inch twist rate it's also comes supplied with iron sights fitted which are adjustable for both windage and elevation both at the fore end and the tip of the barrel the synthetic stock is fully free floated and has a stiff fore end so can withstand some more brutal handling it shoots well in all positions and has plentiful grip from the grippy side walls. Scope mounting is CZ proprietary system and features a twin groove assembly and the rear one has a recoil stop. These are worn rings. The magazine in either 3006, 308 or 65 Creedmoor uses a sprung BDL system and holds five rounds plus one in the chamber if needed. Here you can see on the bolt shroud there's a cocked action indicator and when the bolt's opened there's a small but effective bolt stop and release catch on the left side just in front of my fingertip there. As supplied, the trigger had a tiny amount of creep and broke at 1400 grams. But it's a fully adjustable unit and you can adjust trigger weight, pre-travel sear engagement and also over-travel after the shot fired. It's actually a very nice unit in use. I might perhaps have preferred some vertical serration on the blade just to make it slightly more grippy. It's notable that this CZ is slightly more generous than a lot of rifles. The grip particularly, with this quite tight radius, offers a good reach to trigger of about 85mm. So it definitely suits those with larger hands, especially if they find other rifles the grip's too small. You can note the very grippy panels here are inlaid into the polymer moulding, which has got a soft touch finish. We've got a two position safety catch, forward for fire, rear for safe. It's silent in operation but it doesn't lock the bolt handle. The bolt handle is a 90 degree lift and this is a long action rifle, so it's proportioned for a 3006 cartridge. Slightly longer than required in either the Creedmoor or 308, but bolt operation is smooth. Clearance underneath the ocular body is not huge. This is a 50 millimeter scope with a 30 millimeter tube. But interestingly, if you put a 56 millimeter scope on it, that clearance does get larger and it also suits the recoil and it also suits the cheek piece design of the stock. I really like the comb design on the rifle. It's been kept high and it's only just underneath the bolt. This is ideal and it gives great alignment on the scope. It's one of the best sporting rifle stock layouts I've found. Length of pull is 360 millimeters. I'm sure spaces can be made or are available if necessary.
The pad itself shows no hard spots and locks well into your shoulder. It's not too soft or squidgy. This is a long action rifle and it was noted during use that on the shorter 308 cartridges, it makes sense to make sure the cartridges are all pushed fully rearward towards the bolt face for the most consistent feed performance. Once that was adopted, there was no problem with feed to the chamber, which was notably smooth and positive ejection from the sprung plunger off the bolt face. Here you can see the floor plate being emptied. It's a polymer unit with a spring steel follower here. And it just clicks back up into position, ready to reload again. Here you can see the uh, nice grippy texture on the sides of the grip. It's ambidextrous and the underside sling stood there as well. It's notable the consistency of the stock and the inlet because there's no bedding movement at all and I've had the rifle in and out of the stock and not lost zero. There's also no evident action stress when you tighten the rear bolt and slacken the front bolt and watch to see if the barrel lifts.